James chapter 3. We're going to read verses 17 through 18. Give you all a little bit of time to get there. While we're getting there, I do want to brag on Zeal. Zaire. What a sermon last week, right? Y'all give him a round of applause. Really good. Really good. I was back there crying and snotting on them stairs back there last week. Get some amens when you get there. Amen. Okay, then. All right. Let's go. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen? Amen. I usually pray right now, but I just prayed, so I'm not going to pray again. Is that all right? Yeah. That's a long enough prayer. Is that good for you? Is that good with y'all? Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, guys. We're continuing this week. Two weeks ago, we discussed the first half of James chapter 3. We talked about teachers, uh, the, the judgment of teachers, and then controlling the tongue. That's the two main things that we talked about two weeks ago. Continuing this series on James, this week, uh, we're going to talk about the second half of chapter 3. I'm going to say the same thing to y'all that I said two weeks ago, because I, I meant for this to be said for both of for this entire show. I thought I was going to put all of chapter 3 in one sermon, but that didn't happen, but the one thing I've learned about studying this chapter in James is that when I preach it, nobody's going to leave here without getting their feelings hurt today. And that's myself included, okay? But again, y'all remember, what am I aiming at? Your heart, not your feet, okay? Just remember that. And plus, I'm speaking truth. Y'all can't get mad at me. This is, you know, this is God talking. Y'all get mad, y'all get mad at him. The second half of James chapter 3 is all about wisdom. But there's two types of wisdom that he talks about in this chapter. It's earthly wisdom and it's godly wisdom. I want to go ahead. Let's go James uh, 3. Chap uh, we're starting at verse 13 for those of y'all that are visitors. We, we, we got to there last two weeks ago. So James chapter 3 verse 13. Who among you is wise and understanding? I'm going to stop right there. Okay. James is asking a question and it's a trick question because if your answer is me, you already, you just, you just lost like completely. Because the thing is, is that the wise, the godly wise person is extremely humble. There's major humility that comes with that. So if you spout it off real quick, I am. You need to check your heart. We're going to keep going on. I'm not going to go any further than that on that part. Okay, if you read the rest of this, who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in gentleness that comes from wisdom. If you notice, that's all in bold, gentleness. And I'm going to come back to that. We're not going to talk about that right this second, but I want to come back to that at the end of the sermon. So, Nick, go ahead and go to verses uh, 14 through 16. And by all means, don't brag about being wise and good if you are bitter and jealous and selfish. That is the worst sort of lie. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, inspired by the devil. Let's go to verse 16. For wherever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder and every other kind of evil. James is describing earthly wisdom right here. Like I said, there's two that he describes in the rest of this chapter. I took what James said, and I kind of put it into my, my own words because I like to kind of simplify things a little bit. Go to that for me, Nick. Earthly wisdom is a selfish and prideful way of living that leads to chaos for me and others. If you're getting your knowledge and wisdom from the earth, from earthly people, it's going to cause major chaos. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, pretty much sums it up. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. If you're getting, if you're getting your knowledge and wisdom from people on this earth, if you're getting knowledge and wisdom from CNN, Fox News, VH1, I don't care. It's not right. You know what? Disney. Good gosh. Have y'all not seen some of the stuff on Disney that our kids are watching nowadays? It's sad that we have to go check out Disney before we let our kids watch a show. 
I mean, I think that I, I hope that most Christians, I hope, have, you know, Netflix and all those other things in their household because the thing is, is you can figure out what your kids are watching there where if you just turn the TV on Disney nowadays, it's pretty sad. You know, Z said something about this last week. You know, we can't allow, number one, don't ever allow the TV to raise your child. Come on, guys. And the Internet's a whole lot worse. You need to be the one raising your children, and you need to be monitoring what is on those TVs. I didn't even expect to go there. <sighs> when we read verses 14 through 16, James has list, he has talked about the characteristics of what earthly wisdom is. Pull that up for me, Nick. If you are a person that relies on earthly wisdom, you're arrogant, you're bitter, you're jealous, you're selfish, and you're a liar. Now, if it's right there in verses 14 through 16. I'm just telling you guys what James is listing for people that rely on earthly wisdom. If that's where they're getting their wisdom, this is the kind of person that they are. Go to that next slide, Nick. Earthly wisdom directs me to be an arrogant person, a bitter person, a jealous person, a selfish person, or a lying person. I actually want to break these five things down a little bit. Arrogance basically means to exalt over others or to brag about oneself to justify their own sinful nature. This is the complete opposite of God-inspired humility. Anyone who brags is not wise. How many of y'all have a, a, a friend well, or an acquaintance that is what I call the, the Mr. One-Upper? Like how many of y'all have somebody like that in your life? Pray for them. Love on them. Okay? But, but that is that person, you know what I'm talking about, where you might come in one day to work and this great thing happened the weekend before. All right, all right, well, I'm going to break this down in, into you hunting terms, okay? All right, so, so let's say, you know, Sunday after church, you went and, and you got you a, a, an eight point, okay? Nice spread, good looking buck, right? And then you go to work the next day and you're, you're talking about it, but Mr. One Upper hears this and he comes by and he starts talking about, oh, an eight point, that's all you got, man? You know, I, I shot 12 point last year, shot. Guys, that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people out there like that. Now, here's the thing. When that happens to you, you feel that, right? Like it's something that it just it hurts because you're so excited. You know, you've, you've done something that's successful in your life, and you're excited about it. But when somebody comes in and throws that in, that's what they're doing. They're being arrogant, and it hurts. My suggestion to y'all is when somebody does that to you, not to belittle them, not to fire back. That's the worst thing you can do. You never want to fight back with people like that. Never. And I'll tell you why. You're not going to win. Because the thing is, they're going to one-up you every single time. Your job is to get away from that situation, get away from that person, pray for them, love on them. You know what I always do when somebody comes at me with something like that? I just I start bragging on them. I just want to see how they react. you know. And it's funny, man, because they'll soak it in. They love it. <laughs> but it just proves a point of, they are not godly, they're not, they're not God, it's not godly wisdom that they're living their life by. They've had somebody else that's talked to them that way and they just thought it was cool. And here's the thing, the majority of the time that somebody is arrogant or somebody's bragging, most of the time they're dealing with something else. Most of the time, mm, he just gave me this. Most of the time, there's pain behind that. Our thought process shouldn't be getting angry at them. Our thought process should be, I need to figure out what's wrong with these people so I can pray for them and love on them and teach them. Let's move on. Go to bitterness. Bitterness is anger of being treated unfairly. When you're treated unfairly, you must not, or excuse me, you must block out all bitterness. Bitterness is not good for you whatsoever, and it will not help build the kingdom in any way. Anyone who is bitter is not wise. There's a lot of people out there that they'll, they'll say what, you know, it's kind of like two weeks ago when I preached that. Well, I didn't say it, 
so I wasn't bitter. No, you can see it all over the face, right? Like, you can see it all over the face. Like, Sadie, my Sadie girl, my middle child, she used to, like, pout really bad, like, really bad. Like, you know, we tell her she couldn't get something. I mean, you, it's just all over her face, right? We all know people like that. There's people that are that way. There's people when you walk into the church, even when you walk into the church, and you see it on their face. Guys, it's the same, it, guys, it's the, it's the same thing I was just talking about with arrogance, though. There's a reason they're that way. And we need to be the light for them. We need to find out why they're that way. How can we help them? Can we pray for them? What is it that we need to do to turn that bitterness into joy? But bitterness, again, that comes from earthly wisdom. That is not godly wisdom. Jealousy. Jealousy is being envious of someone who has something you do not have. Simply put, jealousy indicates that you are not satisfied with what God has given you. Anyone who is jealous is not wise. One thing I've learned about jealousy, 99% of the time, jealousy turns into gossip. Because when somebody's jealous, man, they just can't hold it in. They just can't. Now, I do need you to understand that jealousy is something that we will all feel at some point in our lives, myself included, many times. You've got to know how to fight that jealousy, guys. Don't let jealousy bring you to the point where you're wanting more in your life. It's like I said, if you're jealous, then you're not happy with what God's given you, and that's how you've got to have, you got to have that mindset. The next time jealousy creeps in your mind, just think, no, look what God's given me. That ought to put you in check pretty quick. Have that mindset. One story, obviously, biblically of jealousy that turned into complete destruction, I mean, is Judas. I mean, y'all can't tell, that man was so jealous of Jesus. He saw the things that Jesus was doing, the miracles that were performed, and Judas was just so upset. Why can't I do that? And sells him for some silver? First of all, I'm in the jewelry business, man. Get some gold. Like, seriously, what's wrong with that dude? But think about it, guys. Think about it. Pure jealousy is what moved the entire world. Judas being jealous is what got Jesus to die on that cross. Now, here's the thing. I want you to understand, Jesus, that was a prophecy. He was going to do it somehow, in some way. It was going to happen, but he knew that's how it was going to happen. I just think it's pretty crazy that God made jealousy is what ended up killing his son. That's, that's nothing but evil. I need y'all to think about that. I truly think that of these things that are listed up here that James put in here of the characteristics of earthly wisdom, jealousy is probably the most dangerous. Jealousy, I can even say, Man, it leads to all those other things. Jealousy will lead to arrogance, it'll lead to bitterness, it'll lead to selfishness, and it'll lead to lying. Jealousy, again, leads to gossip, and guys, stay away from gossip. I talked about that a couple weeks ago, especially in the church. Especially in the church. Especially in the church. Amen? Amen? Lying, or excuse me, selfishness. Desire, okay, yeah. Is the desire, selfishness is the desire to put oneself forward and not having the spirit of humility. It is the opposite of serving others, which is exactly what Jesus did his entire life on earth. Selfishness is the failure to depend on God. Anyone who is selfish is not wise. Okay, selfish people are entitled people. That is one word that makes me irk every time I hear it is entitlement. Entitlement. Show of hands. How many in here know somebody that feels like they're entitled? Show of hands. If none of y'all are raising your hand, never mind. I was going to say, never mind. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. He blocked me from saying it. Thank you. Thank you, Father. He anointed me. Thank you. As, ooh. Guys, 
entitlement. I'll just put it this way. There's only one person that's ever walked this earth that should be entitled. Amen? I'm going to move on from that. Lying is practicing falsehood. It is the opposite of truth. Who's the truth? Jesus Christ is the truth, right? So if you're a liar, you're denying the truth. So you're denying Jesus Christ. Like I said, I know I'm going to step on some toes. But again, it's not me. I'm just reading what James wrote, which is God-inspired, right? Anyone who lies is not wise. But here's the scary part. We're not done. These are five characteristics. I want to go back. Uh, Nick, could you go back to verse 16, please? For wherever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder of every other kind of evil every other kind not just those five not just some evil every kind of evil let's go to Proverbs chapter 6 I'm going to read verses 16 through 19 the Lord hates six things. He's talking about different evils here. Seven are detestable to him. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among brothers. Earthly wisdom opens the door for not only the five that James mentioned, but all of this. And you're thinking, are, are you kidding me right now? I mean, seriously, guys, listen. Where is it? A lying witness? One that stirs up trouble? Hands that shed innocent blood? James is telling you right here that it opens up the door for every kind of evil if you're getting your wisdom from earthly people. Murder included. Let's read James chapter, let's go 17 and 18, verse 17 and 18. Now here, okay, I'm just going to read it now. See, I like it. But, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. I read this at the beginning. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times. There's that word, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Doesn't that sound so much better than that earthly junk? That godly wisdom sounds a whole lot better than that earthly junk, right? James is describing, obviously, here, godly wisdom. Again, I kind of took it and put it in my own words. Go ahead and pull that up, Nick. Godly wisdom is a Christ-centered life that leads to fruitfulness for me and for others. If you remember, godly, excuse me, earthly wisdom, what happened with it was it caused chaos. I kind of like the lights down. That was kind of cool. Y'all can leave me like that. I didn't know y'all taking a nap back there or what. That's cool. You, can y'all make them like flicker, you know, like a disco kind of thing? That'd be kind of cool. All these visitors are like, man, these people, they, they, they need to take things more serious around here. Okay, so if y'all remember, earthly wisdom was chaos for me and others, but godly wisdom is fruitfulness for me and others. If you look at Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, I put that on there because here's the thing. God is our Father, right? He wants us to speak to Him that way. And He wants you to speak to Him like a Father that you would not fear. But we have to acknowledge that He is God and we need to fear the Lord. And what I mean by that is, if we don't follow His instruction, if we don't get our wisdom from Him, if we get our wisdom 
from the earthly source. Only destruction comes from that. That scares me enough. That needs to be our mindset. I want to go back to James uh, 17 through 18, Nick. This is where I want to bring up gentleness. It's mentioned, okay, in this entire half of this chapter, there is a word that is repeated, and that is gentleness, right? Gentle at all times, and in the beginning it was gentleness is, is wisdom. If James is repeating the same word twice, that should definitely light us up. Oh, that's important. If he's repeating that twice, gentleness, that's important. I've said this many times in this church, but gentleness, what God really wants us to be is meek people. And so many people think that meekness is weakness, but it's not. In fact, the, the, the Greek word for meek is, is actually warhorse, is what it is. We are to be meek like a warhorse. Now, let me explain a warhorse to y'all. Now, I preached a sermon about half a year ago, and this is what I talked about. So some of y'all heard this before. If you've heard it before and you're hearing it again, just nod and act spiritual, okay? We've got a lot of visitors in here. Don't embarrass me. A war horse is so gentle to his rider. And I even went back and studied on this a little bit more this morning. He was not only gentle to the rider, but the rider's family. It was basically a pet. But here's the difference. You back him into a corner. It's time to go to work. That's what meekness is. We are to be gentle. We are to be loving and peaceful and fruitful and righteous. And we need to pick our battles the right way. Something else about a war horse that war horse only gets angry. I want you to think about this. I read this this morning. A horse, on average, a war horse, goes to two battles in his lifetime. My question to you is, is how many times have you let your anger get a hold of you in the last week? But if we're to be meek like a war horse, see, he picks his battles at the right time. It's when it gets real serious, and that's when he steps up. You won't call that war horse a coward, by the way. They're stout. You won't call him weak. Gentleness being mentioned again twice. shows me that church leadership should always be gentle. Church leadership should be gentle, approachable, loving. I need everybody in this room to understand something. When we pick out leaders for this church, gentleness is the first thing I look for. And the reason for that is if you're not gentle, you're not wise. And I want wise people running this church. Amen? Amen? So I want you to think about that. If there's something that you're wanting to do in this church, if you're wanting to be in leadership, and you wonder why maybe you're not, hit rewind. Have we seen you be aggressive, argumentative, have an attitude. Y'all are looking at me like, Mike, I've seen you with an attitude. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to beat everybody up. It's like I said, I'm stepping on my toes too. I know my past. Okay? I know it. I know my temper, what it used to be. I know the anger that I used to have, the jealousy that I used to have. Guys, I'm here to tell you right now that I used to live by earthly wisdom. And the day that I went to godly wisdom, my whole life got a lot more peaceful. Mm -hmm. 
gentleness should lead the church. No one should ever lead out of an anger of, of emotion. It should always be gentleness. But I do want to turn it around again. If somebody comes at you and attacks you in that way, there's something they're going through. See, I have changed my life to where when somebody comes at me that way, I immediately flip a switch and I do, I, I get on the, I go on the attack, but I go on the attack of, God, tell me what's going on with this person. God, show me how I can help this person. How can I lead to set an example for this person? See, meekness is, is when somebody comes up to you and they give you that attitude or give you some whatever, mouth, whatever, it doesn't matter, however you want to say it. That gentleness that you have, I promise you, speaks volumes to that person. It may not in that moment. I've seen it many times where somebody will come, and, and this has happened to me. Somebody will come, and they'll get upset, and they'll attack me with words. And I'll literally just sit there and apologize. I'll just say one apology. I'm sorry. I let you down, or whatever it may be. And I turn around, and I, I walk away. And that person in that moment may still be mad because they don't have that gentleness yet. But within days, you hear from them. Because the gentleness that you showed, that is a much stronger weapon than you attacking them back. I want you to think about this. When somebody attacks you with emotion or an attitude, and you attack back with the weapon of anger, How's that growing the kingdom? But if you attack back with gentleness, how's that growing the kingdom? Two things have happened there. Number one, you've kept yourself from saying something stupid. And then number two, you're showing God's love. When I make a mistake, God doesn't scold me. He doesn't. You know, I can sit here and say right now, there's never been a time that God has scolded me, like brought me down. Because that's not God, right? God's going to be gentle. He's going to be loving. And he's going to lift you up. We need to do the exact same thing. Amen. If you do have a confrontational conversation that you have to have with someone, I do want to give you some advice, two things that you need to think of. Number one, that person is made in the image of God. Would you talk to God that way? Always goes through my head. Man, when I get mad, I just want to get on to somebody. I'm like, oh, but that person's made in the image of God just like I am. That's God's child just like I am. So I want you to think about this. If you had a, a kid that was acting up, Okay, and, and, and running around doing whatever, and, and their parent was standing right there, standing right there. You might get on to that child, but are you going to get extremely aggressive to that child with dad standing right there? You need to have the thought process of God standing there when you're talking to one of his children. And then the other thing that I want to suggest, so have that mindset, right? That this is God's child as well. Would you talk to your father that way? It's made, you know, we're made in his image. And then number two, don't ever, ever have a confrontational conversation or speak out of anger in public. Because here's the thing, not only are you destroying that person's walk, but anybody else that sees that, they're done with you. And you know, the thing they're going to think is, man, they say they're a Christian. Look at how they act. Those are the two things, guys, that you should take with all, all these confrontational conversations that you may have in life. I promise you, if you do it behind closed doors, it will save you so much headache.
Nick, put that last slide up here for me, that earthly wisdom versus godly wisdom. Left side, this is what James is saying is earthly wisdom. Arrogance, bitterness, jealousy, selfishness, lying, scheming, plotting, gossip, false teachings, and even murder. Because it said every kind of evil, right? And then godly wisdom, gentleness, purity, peacefulness, humility, mercy, unselfishness, sincerity, and righteousness. Now, guys, you have a decision to make when it comes to being wise. The one word that should always come in your head is gentleness. Always gentleness. Now, I know that's hard. I know you, you, know, I know you get angry. But that one word should always pop in your mind. Gentleness. If you're gentle, you're going to be on this right side. This is what's going to come with godly wisdom. But if you attack it with anger... Look at what can happen. That false teachings, I want to add to that real quick. That's for the church. If you have a church that is led by people that are not gentle, and it's all out of anger, and there's no love there, I promise you, false teachings are going to come from it. James is telling you that. Every kind of evil will enter a church that is not led by the right kind of people. The reason I bring that up is this. I need y'all to hold me accountable. I need y'all to hold me accountable. I need you to hold Bojo accountable, Zaire, Mikey, our elders, Cheryl, anybody that's in leadership. Hold us accountable. If we can lead with godly wisdom, imagine what this church is going to be in one year, two years, and three years. Hold me accountable. And I mean that. I hope y'all know I mean that. Do not let leadership be the reason that a church goes the wrong way do y'all understand me I need some head nodding grab a pen and paper and write this down my watch is dead what time is it Bojo I did good grab a pen and paper go ahead Nick if you claim to have wisdom like you should, why do you live like you shouldn't? Guys, grab godly wisdom and run with it. Amen?